Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The tires are perpendicular to the road surface in the direction of travel. Don't you have that impression as well? However, that is different from reality. Tires and wheels have multiple angles relative to the road surface in the direction of travel and each producing its own effect. These angles are referred to as wheel alignment and consist of four elements, caster, camber, toe, and kingpin inclination angle. Caster is the tilt of the steering axis of road wheel when the vehicle is viewed from the side. In a double wishbone suspension, it is the line connecting the upper arm pivot and the lower arm pivot. And in a strut suspension, it is the line connecting the lower arm pivot and the strut upper mount. The angle between the caster axis and the vertical line to the road surface is called the caster angle. And the distance between the point where the extended caster axis intersects the road and the center point of the tire contact area is called the caster trail. Caster has two functions, generating the self-centering force in the steering wheel and improving straight line stability. When the steering wheel is turned, the wheels are steered by the tilted steering axis while the contact area with the road surface moves up and down. However, since the ground does not move in reality, operating the steering results in the vehicle body is moved up and down. Furthermore, since the vehicle has weight, when the driver takes their hands off the steering wheel, a force acts on the wheels to return them to a straight-ahead position. The red arrow indicates the force that moves the vehicle forward, acting at point A, where the caster axis intersects with the road surface. The rolling resistance of the tire acts at the center point B of the tire contact area, represented by the blue arrow. When the left tire goes over a gap, the steering is pulled to the right, this creates a directional difference between the red arrow and the blue arrow, resulting in a counterclockwise rotational force at point A. This force acts to return the wheel to the straight-ahead position. If the caster trail is large, in other words, if the distance between points A and B is large, the rotational force acting at point A increases, resulting in a greater force that returns the wheel to the straight-ahead position. Therefore, a vehicle with a larger caster angle provides greater straight line stability, while a vehicle with a smaller caster angle is easier to corner. You can easily understand this by comparing the angles of the front forks on cruising motorcycles and sport motorcycles. The tilt of a wheel, when viewed from the front is called camber. When the wheel is tilted inward toward the vehicle body, it's called negative camber. And when they are tilted outward, it's called positive camber. The role of camber is to keep the tire upright against the road surface when the suspension compresses. When the suspension compresses, the wheels move into a positive camber position. When cornering, the outer tire moves into this position, which causes two issues. The first issue is that the tire's contact area decreases, reducing traction and lowering cornering performance. The second issue is the generation of camber thrust force. Camber thrust force is the lateral force generated by a tilted tire. Motorcycles corner by leaning the chassis, which generates camber thrust force on the tires. In the case of cars, when the outer tire moves into a positive camber position, camber thrust force is generated outward, which reduces cornering performance. To prevent these issues, the wheels are set with a negative camber in advance, so that the outer tire stands upright during cornering. The change in camber due to suspension stroke is pronounced in strut-type suspensions. Therefore, racing cars based on production vehicles with strut-type suspension are set with a large negative camber. That's awesome and really cool. In the case of a double wishbone suspension, setting the upper and lower arms to the same length in parallel allows the wheel to move through its stroke without any change in camber. However, 
In this case, when the body rolls, the outer wheel in the corner still ends up in a positive camber position. For this reason, actual double wishbone suspensions avoid this issue by varying the lengths of the upper and lower arms or adjusting the arm angles. This is why the double wishbone suspension is said to have a high degree of design flexibility. The tilt of the wheels when viewed from above the car is called tow. The configuration where the distance between the front edges of the left and right wheels is smaller is called towing, while a larger distance is called tow out. Today, most passenger cars are set to either towin or zero tow. Towin serves two purposes. Improving straight line stability and preventing uneven tire wear caused by negative camber. Generally, a towin setting contributes to straight line stability, while tow out is thought to enhance handling performance. While driving, the steering pulls to the right due to the road's incline and other factors. In the case of towin, the toe angle of the left wheel increases, causing rolling resistance to rise, while the toe angle of the right wheel decreases, reducing rolling resistance. As a result, a greater rotational force is generated on the left wheel, and both wheels will return to a straight-ahead position. This action enhances straight-line stability. In the case of toe-out, the toe angle of the left wheel decreases, reducing tire rolling resistance while the toe angle of the right wheel increases, resulting in greater rolling resistance. As a result, a greater rotational force is generated on the right wheel, and both wheels turn further to the right. This action adversely affects straight-line stability, while providing nimble handling. When negative camber is set, the inside of the tire makes contact with the ground during straight driving, causing uneven wear on the inner side of the tire. When tone is set, the outside of the tire makes contact with the ground during straight driving, causing uneven wear on the outer side of the tire. Considering this characteristic, vehicles with negative camber are equipped with appropriate towing settings to prevent uneven tire wear. The tilt of the steering axis when viewing a car from the front is called the kingpin inclination angle. Since modern passenger cars do not have a physical kingpin, the virtual kingpin inclination angle is defined by the line connecting the lower arm pivot and the strut upper mount, in the case of a strut type suspension, or the line connecting the lower and upper arm pivots, in the case of a double wishbone suspension. The distance between the point where the kingpin inclination angle intersects the road surface and the center of the tire contact area is called the kingpin offset or scrub radius. The kingpin inclination angle has two functions. The first function, similar to caster, is that the tilt of the steering axis causes the wheel to move up and down, generating a self-centering force on the steering wheel. The second is the effect of a small scrub radius. A small scrub radius reduces steering wheel effort and reduces kickback from the road to the steering wheel. Please be careful if you plan to replace suspension parts or switch to tires and wheels of a different size. All of these will alter the wheel alignment, affecting tire wear and handling. When making replacements, it's recommended to consult an experienced engineer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.